Well, it's 2024, Call of Duty Black Ops 6 is out, and as much as it pains me to say this, it's kind of good. And it truly does pain me to say that because I have been on the Call of Duty is falling off train since like Black Ops 1. And after playing Cold War, I honestly thought I would never touch these games again. But the zombies community hype leading up to the game kind of got me. Like I definitely bought into the advertising and what a wild ride it was up until launch. Treyarch releases the trailer for Terminus map and just the possibility of Treyarch going back to this kind of Black Ops 3 round base zombies style map with like a heavy theme got everybody going nuts and as we get more gameplay and more info everything is looking better and better and better until we hit this peak and everybody's like black ops 6 is going to be the one and then we got the trailer for liberty falls which was immediately hated on so much that the community amended the name to liberty balls which is very funny and the hype around the game as a whole immediately tanks Everybody's dooming. They're like, it's over. We we had too much faith in Treyarch. But then Treyarch actually listens to the fan base and addresses it later in an interview and said that they're essentially fixing the aura issues with the map that everybody was so concerned about. And so then we enter like a few weeks before launch and people are kind of all over the place. People are huffing copium as hard as they can. They're like, we just got to hold out. But, you know, there's, there's still hope. Like maybe Terminus will be good and Liberty Falls will be like crap, but like who knows? And that brings us to today. The game is out. I did buy it day one. It was 70 fucking dollars, but the game is fun. The multiplayer is fun. The zombies is fun. And not only that, Liberty Falls, AKA Liberty Balls, is also really fun. And while this isn't like the greatest zombies game ever, like I'm not gonna be glazing Treyarch the whole time, it's still pointing us in the right direction. I think it has a lot of potential, especially since it's brought a lot of players like myself who haven't played zombies in like 10 years or really cared about any Call of Duty game kind of back into the fold. So let's talk about it. Is it good? Is it bad? Let's get into it. First of all, I want to talk about some of the returning and new mechanics in the zombies mode, which I am mostly a fan of all of these. The armor system is great. It's very simple, but it adds a little more depth and intensity to the game, especially on higher rounds. You essentially have an armor plate that you manually have to put on once that breaks and it mitigates some of your damage. And then you can upgrade this to have a max of three armor plates. But since you you have to manually put them back on it kind of adds another layer to just your mundane training zombies gameplay where you're not only thinking about sprinting and training your zombies effectively or sliding past a boss or dodging a mangler cannon you're also having to worry about essentially another health bar and replating your armor when necessary but i do like that you can also do other actions while you've played so you can play and reload or play and shoot with certain guns at the same time the salvage system is also cool and is much easier to understand than it was in cold war there's only one type of salvage it drops from enemies you pick it up and then you can upgrade your ammo mods you can upgrade your gun you can buy one-time use items like chopper gunners again it's a very clear clean and simple system, which I appreciate, but it kind of adds a secondary form of interesting choices you need to make throughout a match. And having these game time decisions on whether you spend your salvage or your currency, and then seeing how those choices affect you in real time in the next few rounds, keeps the mode really interesting. I think presenting the player with more choices like that is only a net good. Like we already have that with money, right? You can either try to save up to open a few doors or spin the box, or you can save your money to try to pack a punch. And so you have that second layer with salvage as well, where you can be saving up to buy a self revive or to upgrade your gun. The augment system is also very cool um, and it adds more depth to kind of your loadout choices. Basically, you can research augments, which you can imagine as like leveling up a skill tree for each of your perks, your ammo mods, and your field upgrades. And once you level up your skill tree enough, you can equip those augments to your perks or your ammo mods. And some of these have like a minor effect, like your melee attack is quicker, but some of them have a pretty big impact on the gameplay itself. Like there's one I think called Turtle Shell for Juggernaut which makes your back impervious to all damage, but your front is still completely vulnerable. And when you get enough of these unlocks, you can start to combine different augments to kind of create pseudo classes. Like you can start to build a tank build or like a fast melee sprinter build or a build that is focused on replenishing as much ammo as you can for free. So it's a cool system, but my one complaint, and this is kind of for the whole game in general, is that the leveling up of these augments is very, very 
very slow and you can only research one skill tree at a time. So between the three categories of augments, there's about 18 and you can only pick one of those to level up during one match. And the leveling up itself, again, is very slow. And this topic could probably warrant its own video entirely, but it's just very silly that they don't allow us to pick one augment tree per category and level them all up at the same time. Gobblegums return, and I'm a little conflicted on the Gobblegums. Obviously, they were implemented originally to create a microtransaction market in Call of Duty, which objectively sucks, but they can introduce some interesting components to the gameplay. And I like to think of Gobblegums in two categories. The first one are normal Gobblegums that build on some aspect of the game, but are presenting you with something brand new. And then the second category I like to call the freebies, and these essentially just give you an item or power up for free. Now I'm sure you can tell I'm more in favor of these normal Gobblegums than the freebie Gobblegums, because the freebies I think can ruin parts of the game. For example, like why would I ever want to spin the box or go on the Easter egg quest to build the wonder weapon, which are objectively interesting and fun components of the gameplay when I can just get it for free with the Wonder Bar Gobble Gum on like round two. And this is especially true for people that will eventually just buy them through the store. On the other hand, there are Gobble Gums that I think are interesting, like the Anywhere But Here Gobble Gum, which teleports you to a random location. And so it kind of acts as like a get out of jail free card. If you get into a sticky situation, you can teleport somewhere but it also presents you with this risk reward where you might get teleported to a worse location. You might get teleported way across the map on an island away from your teammates or in like a cramped corridor with a bunch of zombies. To give you another fitting example, there's a gobble gum, I think it's called keeping the score and it just gives you double points. It just gives you a free double points power up. And I think in terms of gameplay, it completely dilutes the fun of getting one or the tension of waiting for a double points and then finally getting it. On the other hand, there's a gobble gum called profit sharing, which shares a portion of the points that you're earning with your other teammates. So it essentially serves the same purpose as keeping score, which gives you more points, but in a much more interesting way and in a way that might actually affect your gameplay in the moment to moment. Overall, I'm not mad at Gobblegums, but I do hope that they add more of these normal Gobblegums that like give you interesting risk rewards or interesting choices or actually change the way you play the game and not more just like freebies, free shit. Here's a wonder weapon, here's a power up, here's a free perk, that kind of crap. And finally, in terms of the weapons, I don't have much to say other than I do appreciate that they made it fairly easy to equip a zombie specific loadout for all of the guns in the game. So when you buy a gun off the wall or you get it out of the box, it comes with all of your custom attachments. And I think that's a super simple but great change. So now let's talk about the maps that we actually got. Terminus and Liberty Balls, or Falls. And I honestly think they're both great, and I really appreciate that Treyarch gave us these two very different styles of map. Terminus is a very large map with a heavy theme, and it's the start of the storyline for this game. It's got new wonder weapons, it's got a big boss fight, etc. And then Liberty Falls, on the other hand, looks like a multiplayer map and is really small and has a lot of open spaces that makes training really easily. And it's generally just much more simple. So it's great for jumping in for a quick round or grinding for camos or whatever. And Treyarch has done this in the past where like in Black Ops 1, for example, you had the DLC line of maps like uh, Ascension, Shangri-La, Moon, and each of those maps got increasingly more large and the Easter eggs got more complicated and it continued the grand story of that game. And so all of those maps kind of felt more involved and it felt like that was what Treyarch was pushing zombies to be. All the new things they were trying out in that game mode were shown in those maps. But they also gave us some remakes of World at War maps like Nocturne Toten, Verruckt, Shino Numa. And those maps are always great for just it's clean, simple, easy survival fun. You could do the Call of the Dead Easter egg, or you could just jump into Nocturne Toten, grab the Thunder Gun and sit in a corner and blast away until you die. Or even in like Black Ops 2, you had Transit, which was a whole thing, but they also gave us Town, which were easy, simple, clean survival maps. So I do appreciate that they're kind of giving us these two options again in Black Ops 6. And they're both very fun and valid and unique in their own way. And Terminus really feels like a step towards a Black Ops 3 kind of era style of map. Those maps that really dove headfirst into the theme. 
even though it still is technically like a facility map, we're definitely getting a lot more here. You have the boat mechanics of driving to these different islands, this underground scientific lab that's underneath the facility area. But in terms of art direction, this like stormy island bunker vibe, they, they definitely went for it and I'm digging it. And that's why it reminds me of kind of these older maps that really gave the art direction 110%. I'm thinking of maps like Shadows of Evil, Origins, Zetsubo, even Transit for all the hate it got, still has a very strong sense of identity. And I think we're starting to see that with Terminus way more than we did with Cold War. And I really hope they push the art direction further into those heavily themed, more fantastical elements of zombies with the other DLC maps that we'll get down the line. Now I have completed both Easter eggs for both maps, the main quest, as well as a bunch of the side Easter eggs. And they're both fairly enjoyable. I'd say they're pretty par for the course in terms of an Easter egg. I've never been super invested in the zombies storyline, so I don't really have much to say on that, but I do find it strangely bizarre and very boring that they're still using characters from the original storyline in this new storyline but they're like from a different universe. So they're like different, but the same, but maybe they're also like merging some of the storyline. I, I don't understand and I don't care, but I do find it confusingly lackluster and kind of like lazy writing for them to be including like Rick Toffin and Samantha again. Like just write new characters. If they wanted to do their own thing, I don't understand why they will not commit to it. Like we don't need to see a third iteration of Rick Toffin to be happy. We just need good maps that are fun to play. In terms of the Easter egg gameplay though, I do find it a bit heavy on the like, defend this area, defend this object from zombies. There are several steps in both Easter eggs that are just doing that. You're just killing zombies in one area and then you go somewhere else and you're killing zombies in another area. And then you have to defend this thing for like a minute and oh no, like a mid mid game boss spawns and you have to kill him and et cetera, et cetera. So I do hope with the upcoming DLCs, we see some more um, puzzle quests, even something like the Simon Says from the moon, like something that engages your brain a little bit and changes every time. So it gives the Easter eggs some more replayability. And I don't think that's something they achieve here with the main Easter eggs. But I would say most of the side Easter eggs are actually surprisingly really fun. And they're fun not only because they're kind of goofy, like we got the bowling stuff and the zombies falling from the sky, the basketball Easter egg. But they're also nice because they actually give you good rewards. So there is incentive to one, know them, and two, do them during matches. And the mid-game and final bosses are, are pretty good. I think most of the mid-game bosses and obviously everything in Liberty Falls, they're just like upgrading an enemy you've already seen, and that's pretty boring. Doesn't really engage the player in any new way. But the final boss fight in Terminus is cool and actually has you in a different boss arena and you have to be actively thinking about where to shoot the boss while also dodging the boss's different attacks and then also managing the horde of zombies and these tentacles that are shooting projectiles at you and especially on a first try it is pretty difficult so it had me and my friends really thinking about how we were preparing for the fight what perks and guns we were going in with did we have the right ammo mods on who had quick revive who had self revive kind of like coordinating all that stuff so yeah very down for more boss fights like that i hope we see more of that in the future so yeah i think both of these maps are good and fun. Terminus is starting to feel like our old zombies maps that we got and Liberty Falls is a great secondary option to have if you just wanna jump in for a quick game or a save file. However, and I think this is more of a criticism of the direction that the zombies has been going in the newer Call of Duty games, especially with the introduction of Warzone and kind of multiplayer elements leaking their way into zombies, like with the armor system. I think there is a bit of zombies magic that has been lost in these games. And that magic I think is making sure the player's vulnerability remains a factor throughout the match. Black Ops 6 as a game is not just faster in general, like uh, obviously movement wise it is faster, but rounds are faster. Faster. You get more points each round, which means you can open the map up faster, which means you can buy guns faster, you can pack a punch faster. And perhaps this is not like the correct term, but it seems like zombies as a game mode has almost been gamified too much. The player is inundated with so many game mechanics, so many upgrades to get, and all of that stuff so quickly 
that there is no room for fear anymore. Like remember, zombies is supposed to be scary. Like this is supposed to be a scary mode. Like the new zombies is not scary. It isn't. I'm sure anyone who's played zombies since like World at War or Black Ops 1, we all remember our first dog round. Especially if you didn't know what was coming, the fog rolling in, the announcer being like, Fetch me their soul. And then a bunch of zombie dogs on fire come fucking sprinting around the corner. Like, ah! That shit was scary as fuck. In Black Ops 6, on the other hand, I am loading into the game with like a fully decked out sniper rifle. And by the time we get to a vermin round, which is this game's version of the dog round, I'm blowing these motherfuckers up with a pack-a-punch Smith & Weston. Like, you think I'm scared? I'm more concerned about getting my last piece of the Wonder Wig. Wonder, wow. Wonder Wig. The Wonder Wig. I'm more concerned about getting the last piece of the Wonder Weapon Easter Egg than I am about some fucking stinky spiders coming at me. And it's not just dog rounds that make the old game scarier. It's because you started with a shitty pistol and zombies hit harder. You went down in like three hits or something. And points rolled in more slowly, so you really had to think about exactly how many points you and your teammates had, who had to open which door. I'm sure everybody remembers round one, shooting a zombie exactly four or five times and then knifing him to get the maximum amount of points. The game really felt like you were scraping by to survive. And in turn, making the player that vulnerable also makes it so much more rewarding when you do finally get Juggernaut, when you do finally get your first pack-a-punched weapon. But I wanna be clear that I don't think this is all necessarily a bad thing. It's just a very different experience to the Call of Duty we had before. I think Black Ops 6 has really built on a lot of the mechanics that we've known for a long time in an interesting way that brings a, a sort of freshness to the genre. But pretending like it's scary or even that it's that difficult to get to like high rounds is just nonsensical. And yes, while Black Ops 6 does take kind of a step towards that Black Ops 3 era of zombies we had, it's still very much built on the foundation of Cold War zombies. So if you really, really hated Cold War zombies, this game might not be for you. So yeah, I think all in all, from what we've seen in the past like 10 years of zombies, this is a very promising start, and I'm surprised that they've given us this much content to begin with. I'm surprised at the quality of the content, and in my opinion, I think Treyarch would really have to fumble the ball hard to not see this go in a continuously more positive direction with the DLC maps. So again, if you're thinking about getting this game and you hated Cold War, maybe wait wait till the dlc maps come out wait till it goes on sale because 70 dollars for a game for any game really is insane except for like maybe baldur's gate 3 or something but if you're like me and you've been waiting for an excuse to kind of get back into zombies it might be worth it i think treyarch is listening to their fan base and i am excited about the future of zombies which is not something i thought i would ever say again so that's saying something. Anyways, thanks for listening to me ramble about this game. Uh, if you like this video, I might be doing more stuff like this. So give me a like, comment, subscribe, whatever you want to do, and I'll see you later.